Children, especially children who come into care with trauma and fractured attachments, might feel all muddled and mixed up about their life story. They might confuse people and places or make risky pell-mell choices as they seek to understand what's been lost. So many baffling, befuddling things have happened to these children and it's simply not their fault. There's always a fox in their hen house. Strands of their history, culture, and identity lay tangled, hidden, broken, or even taken from them. They develop perplexing, hair-brained coping strategies for understanding their story and their trauma that may not always fly for the rest of us. Some children might know far too much for their young age. Others might gobble up endless attention. <laughs> Some children bolt and fly the coop, literally running away from it all. Another child may choose to ignore everything around them, including us. Chock full of change and chaos? How can these children know what's real and what isn't? It's like the world is always falling down around them. Despite our best, to the moon and back, heartfelt efforts to take them under our wings, they might still push us away. They might not talk at all. Their foundation feels too unstable. Or, preposterously, when they do talk, they might challenge what we think is the truth. What they do have to tell may feel too hard for us to hear and too much for us to bear. Eventually, and catastrophically, they might even just give up. Worse yet, in sheer exasperation and total vexation, we adults might feel, well, cuckoo and just give up too. Jiminy Crickets, it's a Twitter announcement. Well, it's not unhappily ever after or the last swan song. It's never too late to heal through storytelling. Storytelling to bounce back from trauma, serious trauma, is a universal recovery method used all over the world. No one knows this better than our veterans. When veterans voice stories safely with others who get it, studies show they gain mastery over trauma, suicide rates go down, and their brains even rewire. It's the same with kids. After not being heard for so long, Kids need our help to find their voice. Here are five simple story starters that plant seeds for a child to feel safe and share. TBRI refers to some of these techniques as creative beginnings, where a child finally hears their words matter. Number one, puppet pals. Puppets can speak to us and for us. Even the most stone-faced, stodgy adult can't resist a conversation with a puppet or muppet. For kids, even simple hands or fingers will do. Number two, fearless feather. Holding a special item while telling their story lends children strength and support. Talking stick rituals have been shared by indigenous cultures since time immemorial. Number three, walkie-talkie. Hiding in a protected place and talking into a walkie-talkie phone or pretend phone helps a child achieve distance from the intensity of their story and even from you, the listener. 
Sort of like when we adults call up a good friend or a hotline to vent. Number four, pen to paper. Good old fashioned journaling or dictating to a grown up to write for them helps kids get scary words out or drawing pictures too. Number five, finally, therapeutic life story work expert Richard Rose advises doing something while doing something to reduce eye contact and the pressure of disclosure. Shooting hoops, playing games, or driving can feel cool and casual instead of being put on the spot. Tools used in Richard Rose's therapeutic life story work like All About Me books and Behavior Trees illustrate how the child's roots help everyone better understand. Richard Rose offers three nifty pieces of advice. First, he advises always be guided by the child. We adults may be irresistibly curious about a child's past, but a child needs us to stay eagle-eyed on what is top of mind for them. Secondly, listen to everything, judge nothing. A child's story is their interpretation. If a child holds on to fantasies, falsehoods, or fairy tales for now, they might serve an important purpose. Third, finally he says, keep your eye on the squirrel. Children's files can be rife and riddled with errors and opinions. They might not mirror what a child seeks to understand in order to heal. Don't fall through the looking glass. So what's the moral of today's story? Well, using creative, kid-friendly story starters, we can help a child spit out even just seeds of their story to very safe, non-judgy adults who can take it like water off a duck's back. And if we remain patient for the rest of the story to sprout or hatch when a child is ready, We'll give a child stronger roots and shoots and the floriferous, diamondiferous freedom to fly. They'll understand where they've been with new hope for who they can choose to be with us. We understand this life story stuff can sound loosey-goosey. No parent can get all their ducks in a row. You're winging it, and that's okay. When things ruffle your feathers, put a feather in your cap. And remember, you rule your own roost. You can do this. For more Happily Ever Afters, explore Robin Goebel, Dr. Jaya John, Beth O'Malley, Joy Reese, Richard Rose, Jessica Sinarski, and TBR.